Central Harlem, where analogies are easily drawn between day-to-day -day existence and the biblical struggle between good and evil. On Sundays, the forces for good gather in scores of churches which dot the community. At the Upper Park Avenue Baptist Church, the congregation awaits the sermon of its pastor, a man who equates evil with just one thing, crime. Words alone do not serve the Reverend Oberia Dempsey in what he sees as the onrushing Armageddon. He and his followers have formed an armed private militia to meet the challenge of crime. The church vigilantes have the tacit support of the police. A veteran Harlem police commander said it. It's a case of the good guys against the bad. In those terms, the Reverend Dempsey is clearly a good guy. I'd like to talk to us today about many of these challenges that we face as a church and as we face as a nation. Now, I want to tell you one thing, my friend. There is no justification for crime. I don't care if you're black as an ace of spades, you are not justified for going out snatching somebody's pocketbook or robbing somebody. I don't care if you're white as snow, there is no justification for crime. I'm against looting, I'm against rioting. I don't say that people shouldn't protest. I don't say that they shouldn't fight if they want to fight. Yes, if you've got something to fight for, fight. But I'm against any type of crime that's committed against a human being for the sake of taking away from that human being something that rightfully belongs to him. So therefore, it is up to us now to face this challenge. I'll say to you today that the greatest challenge facing America is not North Vietnam, the greatest challenge facing America is crime. Awareness of that challenge comes early here. Junkies, hustlers, hoodlums are common sights to George Blunt, who's 12, and his younger brother, Jeffrey. George recalls the time his family's home was broken into. And they took some of my father's papers and a watch, but they broke a lock. Three different times they broke my little box a wine or uh, a dope addict or something. A taxi driver attacked right across the street from where the boys lived. These two brothers jumped him. They beat him up, hit him, in this one stabbed him in his arm. They beat him all over in his face and everything, took his money. And then two policemen came. And then took, he took him to the hospital. And an attack on an old woman in the park. You see, I came from the bank. And then these two boys, they saw him. And then I snatched her pocketbook and kept going. She hollered. She said, help. She said, help, help. This boy drive me. These boys are sixth graders at the fashionable Browning School on East 62nd Street. In degree and type, the crime problem on the Upper East Side is different from that known by George and Jeffrey Blunt. But it's nonetheless very real here, too. Take Charles Mailer, age 11. Over the past 18 months, Charlie has been threatened and menaced by bigger boys. More than half his classmates have had the same experience. Most of these incidents are not reported to the police because parents generally do not consider them serious enough. But who could question the seriousness of what happened to Charlie and one of his chums when they walked into a tunnel in Central Park not so long ago? These kids came in from the other side of the tunnel. One of them, the biggest one, pulled a knife on us and said, do you have any money? We said yes, and uh, they took the money, 35 cents, and ran off the other way. Few would question the idea that boyhood ought to be a relatively carefree time. But the city youngster learns early that such an attitude is not entirely realistic. I've been mugged about five or six times. My mother makes me carry a quarter around in the event I'm mugged. I feel pretty scared. I always look around. 